Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Whenever I see another breaking of the day, I say thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Whenever I see another breaking of the day, I say thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you. Lord, I welcome you, viewers at home, in the name of the Lord, the wonderful presence of the Lord, where all things are made possible through Him and in Him, by Him and for His glory. Today, by the grace of God, uh, Tuesday, uh, February 20, 2024, we shall be looking at a topic as we consider the topic, Trust the Lord. And the uh, passage for our reading is Psalm 56, from verse 1 to 11. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today again and again for grace that we have received in such a time like this as we look up, up unto you. And as we intently search your word, Lord, I ask, the Bible says, the entrance of your word giveth life, and it imparted understanding unto the simple. I ask, O Lord, by your word that says, there is a spirit in man, but the inspiration of God Almighty giveth him understanding. We ask that you inspire us, you open your heaven, and your word will come unto us, just like the prophet of old, and Lord, your disciple, many have to say, say, and the word of the Lord come unto us. Let your word come. Let your word reach out to all the, the, the farthest part of the earth today. As your word is spoken, as your word is heard, we we'll pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Psalm 56 from verse 1. And I'll read. Be merciful unto me, O God. For man would swallow me up, if, if fighting me daily oppressed me. My enemies would daily swallow me up, for there be many that fight against me, O thou most I. What time am I afraid? I will trust in thee. In God I will praise his word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Every day they rest my works, and all their thoughts are against me for evil. They gather themselves together, they heal themselves, they mark my steps. When they wait for my soul, shall they escape my iniquity? In thy hunger, Cast down the people, O God, that telleth my wandering. Put down my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? When I cry unto thee, then shall my enemy turn back. This I know, for God is for me. In God will I praise his word. In the Lord will I praise his word. In God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. Thy vows are upon me. O God, I will render praises unto thee, for thou art delivered my soul from death. Will not thou deliver my faith from falling, that I may work before God in the light of of the living, the word of the Lord. Beloved of God, this morning again, as we look intently onto our devotion, 
taken from Psalm 56 at 1 to 11. It is important for us to have a brief background of where we are going into today for the purpose of context. I would like to say, uh, by words of introduction, that the portion of the psalm is titled Miktan, that is the Miktan of David. Miktan means to cover, uh, the Hebrew word to cover. It's a psalm set to chief music musician called the Silent Dove in the Distant Land. It is Miktan of David, or his private cry, when the Philistines capture him in Gath. When they capture him in Gath. And uh, we could see that uh, he, 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 to collaborate this from 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 10 to 15. 1 Samuel 12, 10 to 15. It was a period. Uh, it, this was a period between the visit, his visit to the tabernacle at Nob, and David arrived at the cave of Adullam, when he was running away from Saul. When David was alone, when he was desperate, he was afraid and not thinking too straight from the fear of death, from the fear of the murderous threat that was being breathed by Saul. But before we go ahead, beloved, I like to look at the key word there. When we say trust in the Lord, what does it really mean? To trust in the Lord or to have trust, it simply means to believe in the reliability, the truth, and the ability or strength of the Almighty God. So we believe that this God is reliable. This God is truthful. There is no lie in him. And above all, you depend on his strength, his capability that is unlimited, is sovereign. God who is omnipotent, who is omnipresent, and God who can do all things is the same we are talking about today. So when is a trust in the Lord? We could mirror from this episode where David was going through trouble. He was going through pain. Like when we started yesterday, started looking at his life and his cry, when he said, I will call upon the Lord. It was in the midst of trouble. And uh, there, there is a sequence. In this episode, we said when David's life was seriously under threat, David has to disguise as a way of pretense to, turn in, to, to, to become insane when they captured him, was captured by the Philistines so that they would not see him as a national threat. Hence, in the opening part of this psalm, in the phrase, it sets the tone, that is, Psalm 56, 1 to 4, sets the tone for the remaining part of the psalm, or the song, as the case might be. Though being closed up, and close mark by the enemy, by his own enemies, and by the Philistine. And King Saul, <clears throat> breathing hatred, battered through envy. As an insecure leader, David had to do one thing. David trusted in the Lord. He trusted in the Lord. Like David, we land in today's reading the following. So when we look at it, what can we really infer from today's reading, like David? One, that, that no possible danger bred by the wicked could be compared with the awesome power of the Almighty God who rules in the affairs of nation. So when David was saying, I will trust in the Lord, what was he saying? He knew that God is reliable. Number two, he knew that God is true to his word. Number three, he trusted in the strength and ability of the Lord compared to the impending troubles and pains and damages that the enemy might be bringing forth. Number
number two I would like us to hold on to is in that no matter the location or the position where the threat of the wicked must have been driven from, we will see, or where the threat of the wicked must have driven you and I to, it doesn't matter where the threat must have driven you to. Some are running away from their villages, running from place of work, and you are doing job loving. Let me change this. If I change that, this will be secure. I won't have the problem. Listen to me. It doesn't matter either in the wilderness or in the dry place, murky waters. Talk about it. When you look at 1 Samuel chapter 19, verse 1 to 2, 1 Samuel chapter 19, 1 to 2, so Samuel 21, 23, 15, which had been, had been positioned on the screen. We must learn that God is fully aware of such struggle. The Lord is aware of our struggles, is aware of our present states. He knew what we are going through emotionally and what you are going through. It doesn't matter who doesn't care, but God cares. He has promised that he will never leave you, nor forsake you. Say, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will never abandon you. That through, though a mother, according to the word of God, a mother can forget the little child that she's breastfeeding. But God said, I will never forget you. I will never forget you. Number three, that I want us to take note. It also stresses this passage that no suffering is purposeless. No matter what you are going through, it's not purposeless. There is a purpose for what you are going through, what I'm going through. There is a purpose. God who sees, who knows, we account for everything at the end. He sees what you are going through. He knows what you are going through. He knows your name. He even calls us by name. So he will never abandon you. That's the word, the word of the Lord had come to us in Psalm 30 verse 5. And I quote, He said, Weeping my duty night, but joy cometh in the morning. Stressing the fact that every suffering, every pain, every circumstance, already asks an expiring date. They may not be palatable, they have an expiring date. It shall not be forever, but for only a season, sometime for only a moment. Therefore, do not give up on your journey to glory. Do not give up on your journey to glory. Sometimes, I remember many years a sister said to me, when things were very tough and difficult, I said, I'm sorry, I don't think I would like to follow this. You're Jesus. I said, Brother Steve, do you know maybe the step that you are taking back to the world, that is a step you will take to a place of fulfillment. That was striked my heart. I want to say to you again, don't abandon Jesus because of your situation. It's very painful today when we see the droves of young people who are going back to idolatry, going back to fetishism, going back getting initiated, and think that let's 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 begin to strengthen ourselves. And some are beginning to say that church is a scam. Church can never be a scam. The true church of God is where two or three are gathering in the name of Christ. Church can never be a scam. That some are faith somewhere does not mean that will be a quota to generalize. The God we serve is still real and is still alive. He can touch you. Number four, that God is saying to us today. That trusting in the Lord, that when you trust in the Lord and you are being anointed, does not immune you to the attack of the wicked. But the standing fact is that they will not overcome you. That's the word of the Lord. In John chapter 16, verse 33, you have this to say, and I quote, In this world you will have tribulations, but be of good cheer. Because you have overcome them. End of quote. You will have it in this world. As long as you are a human being, you live here. Water and blood flow in your vein. You will still have it. But the Lord says, we are on an overcomer. Already, we are an overcomer. May I say to you, there are steps that are very good to be taken for us to build 
trust in the Lord. Number one, you must make efforts to know God. David, who said, you cannot trust God that you did not know. In Psalm 42, verse 1, David has this to say. You could see the life of the man speaking, his devotion, his commitment. You could see how straight his focus was. said, as the deer panted for the waters, so my soul long after thee. We could see it there. In Psalm 27, verse 4, this same David, a man anointed of God, a man after God's own heart, they were being pursued all over by enemy, and who was not even immune against attack. But God allowed it for the purpose. Listen, in Psalm 27 and verse 4, He said, One thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek. He said, To dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Beloved of God, what is it that is making you to become a trant when it comes to the house of God? giving excuses, saying all sorts of things. Number two, he said to behold the beauty of the Lord, to behold the beauty of the Lord, to dwell in the house of the Lord, to behold the beauty of the Lord. And number three, he said to inquire in his temple, to inquire in his temple, to know more, to dig deep, to go deeper with the Lord, to go further with him. In the, in, in the school of discipleship in a school whereby you have submitted yourself to follow after the pattern of God Almighty. Can we just move forward? And I could see that in the life of Brad Paul too, in building what we are talking about. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 10 and 11. Philippians 3, 10 and 11. I have this to say in Paul's epistle to the Philippians. He said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. If in any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the death. That was what Brad Paul says. And in John 4, 34, we saw that knowing God's hearts and purpose for your life is very important. That's number two. I've highlighted number one, make effort to know God. Number two, know God's heart for your life. And God's heart and his purpose for your life. In John 4 34, it was Jesus himself who said this. He said, My will is to do the work of him who had sent me and to finish it. May you do the work of God and finish it well. He said, To do the work of him who has sent me. Not my work, not the work of my community, not the work of an indigenous group. It's not an answer to that. Brothers and sisters, do you know you are an answer? You are a solution to something in that corner. To do it and to finish it. He said in John 9, 4, I must work the work of him who has sent me. God has sent you with a work. There's something he sent you with there. You must do it. I must do it. While it is day for the night cometh, when no man can walk again. End of quote, John 9, 4. Number three thing I want you to take as a step in solidifying your trust in the Lord is our absolute yieldedness. When we surrender absolutely unto the control, having allowing God to have control over our lives, it is very important. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I have this to say, said, Now I have been crucified with Christ, Nevertheless, I live, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And that translation says, and the Son of God living his life in me. And the life which I now live in flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Somebody who gave his life for you and I. Is the one we must live for. And that translation says, I said, imbibing patience. And the other one I would like to say, number four, as a step to developing your trust in the Lord. Number four is to imbibe patience. Is to imbibe patience. James chapter one. Or you develop endurance in trial. 
James 1, 2 to 3. My brethren, count it all joy when you face or you fall into diverse temptation. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith work at patience, but let patience have a perfect work that you may be perfect and an entire wanting nothing. It is important to know that. Also in Romans 5, 3, we have this to say from Amplified Bible. I'll take that from the Amplified. And not only this, but with joy, let us exult in our suffering and rejoice in our hardship, knowing that the act, that hardship, distress, pressure, troubles, produces patience or endurance. But Amplify use patient endurance. In conclusion, beloved, we must have absolute belief in the reliability, trust, and unlimited capacity or capability or strength of Almighty God always. Again, that we must have a right attitude towards suffering and troubles, that no suffering or trouble is purposeless, and that God has promised never to abandon us. More so that God has never promised us that we shall not go through troubles, but he promised that he will be with us, that we be with you. Isaiah 43, 1 to 2. But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you, and I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. I will be with you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. What are the demands that God is laying upon us today? Therefore, I say to you today, from Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, 1, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. That's number two. Do not lean on your own understanding. Number three, in all your ways, acknowledge him. Testify of his goodness and his outcome. And what are those outcomes? Proverbs 3, verse 6. And it will make straight your path. It will make straight your path. Then in Psalm 56, 7, I mean, to 13, you will see from 7 to 13, from 9 to 13, we could see the outcome there. And I will read thus. And it says, When I cry unto thee, then shall my enemies turn their back. This I know, for God is for me. So when you cry, you trust in him, then you will cry unto him, your enemies will turn back. The second one, in God will I praise his word. For in the Lord will I praise his word. The next one, in God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid. What can any man do unto me? You will not be afraid what any man can do to you. And the next one said, Thy vows are upon me, O God. I will render my praise unto thee. For thou art delivered my soul from death. And will not thou deliver my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living? Let us pray. Will you speak to the Lord at this time and ask God, the Lord, renew my trust. Let my eyes fix on you. The word trust means to believe. Lord, touch my belief. Touch my heart. Take away every doubt. Wherever I'm doubting your ability, wherever I'm doubting your words, that the Lord will deal with such in our lives today. That Lord, you will renew my hope in you. That God, help me again to see you anew. Ask for definite encounter today even as we go into the works of the world. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for answering our prayers. Can you bring your request unto the Lord as we round up? For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Pray today as you go forth that the Lord will bless you. As you trust in the Lord, you will never be ashamed. The Lord will establish you in truth, we will establish you in righteousness. You will go out with peace and you will return singing. And so we bless you. Name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So continue to stay blessed and remain blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. 
We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.